it's an annual affair. It's, it's nice to get together with our family from Grundy. I know my son, who's a freshman now at the United States Naval Academy, is up helping with the young men coaching today. You know, he, he doesn't go to all the camps with me anymore. He used to. I, I kind of miss him. You know, it's like taking the children and then where you go. And, and every year, I, you know, I say, Jake, I need you to go here. Yeah, do I really have to? And this and that. But, he says, but on, on the calendar, he says, when's Grundy? You know, and that's number one on his. I mean, he doesn't miss Grundy because he grew up in Grundy. You know, he came up with us when he was little. A lot of the families took him in. When I went back and he stayed up here and rode four wheelers up in the mountains, we couldn't get him back. And we have, it's not like we have nothing to do in Orlando, you know, with, with Disney World and everything. But he didn't want Disney World, he wanted this Grundy family. And he's up here again because he loves Grundy. And that's why I come back to Grundy. It's more than a wrestling camp. And you're working on a documentary now that's uh, being shot for television about the, the city of Grundy. The city, that was a slip. The town of Grundy. Uh, not the city necessarily, but, you know, in the community. It's not the wrestling, it's the community. That's what Grundy's about. It's not the things and losses. Do you have state champs? Absolutely. Have you had success? You bet. But you've had more success with the young men, getting them through school. I talked with uh, Caleb a minute ago. I said, you know, you're a grandpa now. What, what does Grundy wrestling mean to you? You're not wrestling now. He said, I am in a way wrestling. He said, when I go to college, when I go to class every day, because I want to talk a little bit about, you know, not only Caleb, but the kids that are here and the little kids that are coming up. But I think tonight, you know, if we can talk about two people tonight, I want to talk about Travis Pfizer, who's been here for 13 years. And it's his program now. It's no longer Kevin Dresser's or Ben Ward's. It's certainly Red Robertson and the family of, of, of the community here. But, you know, Travis has been here, and he's made this his home. He brought his wife back from Iowa, kicking and screaming out of Iowa to get back here from Blacksburg and, and raise his family here. And, and what he's done, and Caleb said it was because of Coach Pfizer and why I'm having success in Bradford. He says, because once you go through the work ethic that is required to be a Grundy wrestler, all the things you have to endure, you have to do it on an empty stomach. We run more than a mile a day. We run lots of miles. We climb rope. We lift weight. We go through pain. And once you've gone through wrestling and Grundy, you've learned how to become a man at an early age. And that's the toughest thing that you have to do the rest of your life. So anything that happens from that point forward, whether you're working in the coal mines, becoming a doctor, a PhD, no matter where you are, nothing is as tough as going through the program in Grundy. And nothing gives you more self-respect, self-esteem, and a feeling of specialness in the family here than going through what Travis puts the kids through. And it makes them want to go on and be very special in life. When we first started with the Reds back in the early 80s when I came up here, there were a lot of great people, and there still are. Red said, we want to win. What do we want to do here with our program? And Red said, I, you know, it's more than a wrestling program. It's more than a sporting opportunity for the kids. I want them to see that there is life outside of Grundy. They certainly may want to come back to Grundy and spend the rest of their lives. But there are some things on the other side of these mountains that I want them to see. We're going to go to Cleveland. We're going to go to Fargo, North Dakota. We're going to go to Iowa. We're going to go to Washington, D.C. We're going to take the bus up there that we had once upon a time. And not only do we wrestle on Saturday in Washington, D.C., but on Sunday we take the kids to the Smithsonian. So they, they mix pleasure and fun with work in the wrestling. And when they come home, when they go to Cleveland to a tournament or Cincinnati, they stop at Six Flags because it's more than just wrestling. It's an opportunity to see how the other people in other states live, to meet different people, and to realize that education is very important. And I think in Red more than anything, it's, it's all about education, giving them the opportunities to do, go, do well and go to different places. And that's what the Grundy community is talking it does with their young youth. Working with here today with these kids this week has been fabulous. And, you know, Travis is, is why the program runs the way it runs. They were third year, as you know, you were third this year at State. You have a great sophomore group coming up, going to be juniors. You've got a junior group, going to be seniors. You've got some good freshmen coming in. And you're going to make another run in the state championship. And double A in a school that doesn't even qualify as half the size of a single A school. You know, we've had a lot of drop in, in enrollment and size of the town. And uh, you're really not a double A school, but you stay in double A because you, you feel that's where you started and that's where you want to finish. And you're, you know, you're more than competitive in a program with schools that are three or four times your size. You know, this just doesn't have the athletes. And again, that's because of the community. It's not the wrestlers, although they represent each one of the parents here. It's the parents who want to do something special for their children. And when they're done with wrestling, they can go out in life, and you know that they're going to be successful. There's more presidents of the United States that participated in wrestling than did any other sport. There's more
congressmen and senators, I'm not sure that's good or bad, you know, with what we have from right now, uh, that wrestled and didn't participate in any other sport. It's a special sport. I've never met a wrestler that drank his lunch out of a brown paper bag street, sitting on some street corner. You know, they may be a janitor, but they're the best janitor in the state that they're in. They may be a Fortune 500 CEO. You know, there's more Fortune 500 CEOs that have wrestled than participated in any other sport. Why? Because it's exactly the same thing we're talking about when Coach Travis Pfizer puts these kids through. Hard work, discipline, persistence. They know how to get up and dust themselves off when life treats them poorly. They don't get down on themselves, and that's what wrestling is. The other gentleman like talk about tonight, other than Travis, guy over here, Steve. Steve Rigby. For no reason whatsoever, Steve's been part of this program since the early 80s. Did he have any children in the program? No. Why? He believed in driving. He believed in the program. He gives other time. Every time you got a tournament, you look at the sports table, he's sitting over there. Sitting next to him was bad open. Unfortunately, Oakley's no longer around with us. You know, he's no longer here. But, you know, the two of them gave years and years and years for no reason other than to be around kids. He said, Steve, why do you do this? The same reason I just been talking about. He said, I can see the kids, the sparkle in their eyes. Go, starting out, first year wrestler, can't walk, chew gum, can't even stand up. A year later, I'm seeing them doing some different moves. And you can see how they stand up a little taller, grow their chest out, their, their shoulders back, and how they walk because they're a wrestler at Grundy. Virginia. It's something special. He wants to be part of that program. And he's, so kicked up. he's been a year since 83. He now has a couple kids who rest in the program now. Started out late in life. Had his son when he was four years old. Now he's part of the program. But for 15 years, he's gave himself to be part of the program. And that's representative of Grundy, Virginia and Grundy Wrestling. It's not necessarily the Mike Cox who won a state title here. You know, or you know, I can't remember you know, the, the list on the state wall is too, too long to even mention all the names of the state champions. But it's more than that. Again, it's community. And every year I come up here to be part of that community to try to help them go to that next level. And next year, Travis, no pressure, state championship. What do you think? Maybe you can handle that. We can do it. Okay. So anyhow, again, this community is helping the kids out. And what I like to do is introduce again the staff. I, I mentioned my son Jake. Jake's uh, dropping him off next week. I'm leaving here Friday, and Monday he has to be at the Naval Academy. So he's over there for his his uh, six week summer program of uh, yes sir, no sir, you know. And then he's starting there wrestling. He he was at Naval Academy Prep School this last year up in Newport, Rhode Island, and uh, he won the national championship for the Navy. Uh, this year, he was unscored on the national championship. No one else in any weight class was unscored on. And he had a uh, toughest weight class. He had five returning All-Americans in his weight class. And so uh, there's no pressure you know, to do anything in the next couple of years. Don't feel you know, that we'll be following the result. But anyhow, Jake was here helping out and all this week. And uh, my other son, uh, he's, he might be able to tell his boss, and I'm not sure that, that might be. <laughs> the resemblance is not the same as Jake and I. Uh, Mr. Marshall here, uh, he's our adopted child. He's been with us since he was uh, about that big. And uh, he's been working with his special, he especially with elementary kids, all the way to the high school kids. And when you watch him work, and any parents who have with little kids, there is none better in America than teaching little kids. He is Mr. Energy. He's just, he's just another little kid up there, but he's in a 34 year old body. But he's amazing to watch him work with the kids, and they have so much fun. They want to come back each day. So we have uh, Chris is doing that, and it's my friend Jay, by the way. And we have Darian Codwell from here today. Darian's over here in the orange with a black hat. Darian, uh, for those who uh, follow wrestling on a collegiate level, he had the biggest, well, I, I, I hesitate to use the word upset because it wasn't an upset in his mind. It might have been an upset in the national's attention, in the national media. Anyhow, beating Metcalf from Iowa, who was labeled just a god in collegiate wrestling. And uh, he kind of butt wax for the kids this year, and Darian, and we brought Darian down, he was the outstanding wrestler in the nation this year on the college level, he has one more year of wrestling, and uh, he got in uh, early this morning, after, after having to sleep on the floor in Charlotte Airport last night, he got bumped on a flight, well, yeah, we got him up here from Colorado, he's been out at the Olympic Training Center for the last couple of weeks working with our Olympians, uh, he's, the, he's, on the, he's the first alternate right now, and he only just started freestyle just a couple months ago, and he moved right up, and he's number two in the in the ladder to represent us in the uh, 2012 Olympics. So these are the young men. They like to they watch the rest of a couple of the guys there. Of course, when there's a new gunslinger in town, everyone wants to uh, try him out. So he's, 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 the, he's the fastest gun in town. And Darian, after he was like, he, 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 he slept on a concrete floor, 
It's my job. Three o'clock. One. It's gotta be eight o'clock. Four o'clock. It's gotta be. Eight. Yeah. Anyhow, I come in here and exhausted and wrestled everybody. And then at about four fifteen, he goes, "Can I get down to the hotel?" You know. Uh, yeah. Okay, there. You get down and take a nap. And anyhow, he's up for this tonight. And uh, I'd like Darian to say a few words again. This is Darian Conwell. He's out of New Jersey. Russell from North Carolina State University, and he's the number one collegiate wrestler in America this year.